We all know that if we look far back into history, the origin of humans and nearly all animals on Earth can be traced back to ancient fish that ventured onto land and evolved into land animals. So, the question is, in the future, will history repeat itself and will we become fish like humans? Clearly, humans continue to evolve and there's always so much more to learn. Like it or not, the reality is that humans have been changing and evolving up to this point. As living beings, we undergo very slow changes in our body structure. This is a fundamental characteristic of ours, always seeking opportunities to improve our chances of survival. You might have wondered why our body gets goosebumps when we're cold. This is actually a leftover reflex from when our ancestors had fur. Similarly, wisdom teeth reflect the evolution of our dietary patterns from those of our ancestors. Another piece of evidence related to this change in diet can be found in the appendix. It once aided in digesting a plant-heavy diet. Nowadays, our diet is much more varied and no longer requires the appendix. This is evidence and remnants of our evolution as the modern human species, or Homo sapiens. So the question is, what does our current evolution look like and what will humans look like in the future? Will climate change lead us to live underwater and become fish like humans, like Aquaman? Talking about Aquaman in Indonesia, an archipelago country in Southeast Asia, there is an ethnic group whose life is often likened to that of fishmen. They are the people of the Bajo tribe. Much like the underwater world that still holds many mysteries, scientists also wonder about the origins of the Bajo tribe. There are many versions of where they come from, ranging from mere legends to scientific research. Some say the Bajo people originated from Johor, Malaysia, based on the legend of the Johor princess. However, this view is considered weak as it is based more on folklore than on archaeological or linguistic evidence showing the Bajo people came from Johor. There's also a theory from Robert Blust, a linguist who believes the Bajo tribe originated from the mouth of the Burrito River. They began to sail around the year 800 AD and settled longer in the Sulu area of the Philippines. Then after the spread of Islam in the 15th century, the Bajo people began migrating southward, spreading to Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and East Nusa Tenggara. Today, they inhabit coastal areas and small islands in eastern Indonesia, the Philippines, and Malaysia. The Bajo people, or Bajau, have lived as sea nomads for thousands of years. A report by Shagatai and Abrahamson in the journal Human Evolution mentions that the Bajo people spend an average of 60% of their daily work time underwater. This means they routinely spend at least five hours a day in the water, earning them the nickname Sea Gypsies. Imagine they are capable of diving up to 70 meters deep for more than 13 minutes to hunt for fish, octopus, clams, seaweed, sea cucumbers, and various other seafoods without the need for diving equipment. This is certainly an astonishing example of evolution, considering the average human can only hold their breath underwater for less than a minute. So, could the unique lifestyle of the Bajo tribe eventually lead them to evolve into Aquaman? Evolution into a Fishman This question has been answered by Melissa Ilardo in her research titled Physiological and Genetic Adaptations to Diving in Sea Nomads. The answer is yes, they are evolving. The unique lifestyle of the Bajau people isn't just a result of their culture, but is also reinforced by physiological adaptations to diving and hypoxia, or the lack of oxygen experienced while diving. Like other diving mammals, humans also have a specific response when diving, triggered by breath hold and the body being submerged in cold water. These physiological responses include bradycardia, which reduces oxygen consumption, peripheral vasoconstriction, prioritizing blood flow to organs most sensitive to oxygen deprivation, and spleen contraction, pumping a supply of oxygenated red blood cells into the bloodstream. 
Scientifically, these adaptations contribute to the Bajau people's extraordinary ability to dive and stay underwater for extended periods. Melissa studied two coastal villages located about 25 kilometers on the central Sulawesi Peninsula. These villages are predominantly inhabited by Bajau people who live at sea and Salawan people who live on land. Did you know? Thousands of studies on marine mammals have confirmed that their spleen size tends to be larger compared to land mammals. And Melissa's research shows that the average spleen size of the Beijiao people is 50% larger compared to the Saluan people, their closest land-dwelling relatives. The Bajau have been separated from the Saluan for about 16,000 years. During this time, the Bajau have spent generations of their lives at sea. In fact, Bajau children start learning to swim before they can walk. It is this adaptation process in the marine environment that has led to the development of a larger spleen in the Bajau people. Overall, this research indicates that the Bajau people have undergone unique evolutionary adaptations related to spleen size and their response to diving. This adds new evidence to the extraordinary genetic adaptations that have occurred in human evolutionary history. Researchers have identified several genes and found specific ones related to thyroid function and spleen size. The spleen is a crucial organ in diving activities. When a person holds their breath or is under high pressure underwater, the spleen plays a vital role in releasing more oxygen into the blood. This allows the body to maintain an adequate oxygen supply during long periods of diving or in conditions that require the body to conserve oxygen. Meanwhile, thyroid hormones are known to regulate the production of red blood cells during early development after birth. Therefore, the larger spleen size in the Bajau people may reflect a higher volume of red blood cells. This genetic mutation could provide a biological advantage to the Bajau people by increasing the number of red blood cells and the capacity to store oxygen. If this process continues over a long period, the Bajau people could develop their own characteristics, even separating themselves from Homo sapiens. This process is called speciation, or the process that creates a new species. A human species that can breathe and even live in water. Yes, Aquaman in the truest sense. Failed to be fishmen. Like other extreme adaptations humans have experienced, the evolution of the Bajau people is also influenced by new cultural practices. But it's unfortunate to see the way of life of the Bajau people, estimated to have a population of around 1 million, becoming increasingly threatened. The pressure of modern development programs from the Indonesian government is urging the Bajau people to detach from their sea-bound lifestyle. In some areas, Bajau communities have been landed meaning they are pressured to live on land as a symbol of progress, leaving behind their sea-based lifestyle deemed backward. The high market demand has also driven the Bajau people to change their habits from environmentally friendly traditional diving techniques for fishing to more practical and destructive methods. Fishing activities have been replaced by modern methods that are far more damaging to nature, such as dynamite fishing or cyanide use. As a result, in recent decades, many Bajau people have been forced to move to land due to the depletion of marine resources and environmental changes. Additionally, the Bajau have shifted from making traditional boats from lightweight wood, now endangered, to heavier boats. This forces them to use engines in their boats, meaning they need money to buy fuel. The Bajau are also starting to abandon their nomadic lifestyle, which was once a part of their identity and existence. There's a negative stigma towards the nomadic lifestyle, which has pushed the Bajau to become more settled in one place. These changes have made the Bajau people, who were originally independent from the sea's bounty, dependent on government aid to meet their basic needs. This shift in lifestyle certainly also changes the evolution of the Bajau people. The evolutionary process leading to larger spleen sizes will no longer develop. 
by leaving the ocean life, where diving is an integral part of daily activities, it's possible that their physiological adaptations to the marine environment will stop. Thus, the evolutionary process that has made the Bajau people known as fishmen may come to a halt or even regress.